name's Kat. Welcome to this YouTube channel and welcome to the sixth class of Beginners Module B. So today we're going to be doing full Vikshasana, balancing. We're going to be doing stage two of Ardha Chandrasana, so also balancing and working the rest of our sequence, adding in our Jatara Padivatanasanas after our Samangasana cycle. So lots to explore, lots to integrate. Let's come and meet on the mat in Vajrasam and begin. Widening the sit bones apart. If the knees ever hurt, you can just lightly pull the skin of the kneecaps up and feel the release of pressure there. Roll the shoulders back. Make the spine long and firm, stabilize and close the eyes. We can define here our breath, smooth and even breath cycles. Keep the collarbones long. Keep relaxing the trapezius muscles. But keep that firmness and lift of the spine so that the front spine from the pubic bone all the way up to the middle of the collarbones is constantly ascending. Soft, smooth inhalations and soft, smooth exhalations. The ears drawing in towards each other. The eyes moving backwards into the back of the skull. The lower jaw hanging from the top jaw. And then bringing the hands up and pressing the palms together. Rerolling the shoulders back. And placing between our palms something very precious. Something most holy for us. And from this energy, opening our practice together with one hole. Inhale. Oh. And with an exhale, gently drop the chin downwards. And visualize the brain traveling down through the throat to take a new seat behind the sternum plate, behind the spiritual heart. And then softly, gently releasing the hands, raising the head and opening the eyelids. Coming to Yoga Mudrasan in Vajrasan, preparing as we know so well how, and exhaling forward. Soft, smooth inhalations and soft, smooth exhalations. Coming into the length of our spine, painting the breath up and down the spine, bringing sensitivity, taking the time to notice, to go with the breath. Finding the length in our arms, walking the hands forward as much as we can, Feeling the length, bringing length to our waist. Painting the breath up and down these new trails. And then coming up onto the hands and knees, inverting the fingers. And taking a moment just to greet the inner arms, the inner wrists as we press forward into those. Relaxing the face, the jaw as we do this, not transferring tension around the body. The exhale really being a place of release, of moving through and letting go. And then moving back a little bit, lifting the palms up and lifting the thumbs up. And greeting our fingers, the roots of our fingers, the palms of our hands. See if you can stretch the thumbs away to feel the skin cells sort of tearing in the palm, moving into that, that's the opening of constriction. And then exhale, releasing, just absorbing that. And then placing the hands, vibrant, open, spread, and finding our first other Mukashvanasana down the top. Coming back with bent knees first, stretching the arms well, Trying to find our shoulder blades and to press them forward to begin that opening of the chest that we look for so much to get the back body to start learning to 
help to press in rather than to curve out. Dropping the head down so the spine feels long all the way to the skull. And then straightening the legs, keeping the heels lifted, trying to lift the sit bones even higher, lengthening the spine in both directions, pressing the shoulder blades in, re-relaxing the face, but with each breath cycle, inhabiting the body with more and more depth, adjusting as needed, noticing, aliveness and then stepping forward hanging uttanasana turning the toes in and heels out to help our thighs remember that as they lift they also roll in and the inner groins have to roll back out to help the sit bones widen and then dropping the head down and taking hold of our elbows for hanging uttanasana connecting with the rhythm of the breath imprinting it, even smooth inhales and exhalations, the movements within from the breath, observing the feet, pressing down into the feet, making sure that the arches aren't collapsing, drawing the inner ankle all the way up to the inner knee, experimenting with that. How clear can we make that adjustment in our bodies? How can we make that be felt? And then feeling the inner knees going all the way up to the inner groins and how that lifts the sit bones even higher, how that really extends the backs of the legs. Then we relax the head and let the elbows move towards the ground. And then releasing the elbows, bending the knees. And as we push through the feet, coming up and finding the task. Checking in with our feet, broadening the toes, having as much as possible an even, firm, mindful pressingness. The heels firm, the inner arches lifted without lifting up the ball underneath the big toe. The edges of the feet firm, the legs firm. Making sure that the belly button is moving towards the lumbar, so we're avoiding our often tendency to do this. Tadasana. From here, coming to simplified Krikshasana. Interlocking our fingers, turning the palms out, knowing each stage of the pose so well now that as we move into the final expression of the pose, we're making all the little adjustments that we've been practicing for so many weeks. Finding the fullest expression much more rapidly this way, eyes bright and open, and two, and one, coming down halfway, changing the interlock, checking in with our elbows and pushing through the feet as we lift up. How are we standing? How are our thighs, the firmness of the roots of the thighs? Could we lengthen the waist small? And two, and one, exhaling, bringing the arms down and reconnecting with Tadasana. Feeling our feet, gripping the legs up, making sure the belly button is moving towards the lumbar, that the organs are lifting, that the lumbar is firm, collarbones long. And coming now to full Vidikshasan. So last week we did it against the wall. And if you're having trouble balancing, you can just keep doing it against the wall, slowly moving away from it. Or you can start right here where we are and try it away from the wall and see what happens. So it's good to pick a spot in front and diffuse the gaze. Keep it as the spot of focus, but diffuse the gaze backwards. because so we have to feel things in a different way when we're balancing. So we're gonna be lifting our right leg first. So it helps to put the left hand on the left hip, not the waist, the hip, and squeeze. There's something about that action that helps. Preparing. Our left leg is going to be standing. Make sure to scoop the outer hip of the standing leg in. Don't let it poke out and distort, which you will want to do. So bring that energy in. So the hand on the hip. And here we go. We're lifting the right leg up. Placing it as high as we can. And connecting that dialogue where the inner thigh and the right foot press against each other. 
and the outer left hip scoops in much more easily when we have that inner conversation going on right there. Try to move the inner right knee back without poking the right buttock out. So pull the right buttock in and move the inner knee back. And then arms in front. Interlock the fingers, turn the palms out. And inhale and lift the arms up. Keep trying to stretch the elbows, remembering the imprint of simplified Dukshasana helping us here. And three. And two. And one. Coming down. Releasing and trying to come straight to Tadasana. Collarbones long, rolling the shoulders back. Relax the face. Okay, so you can see it's a different type of focus, which is why I couldn't do it facing the camera. I tried actually, and having the camera there was just completely setting me off. So I've turned so that I have this nice, easy thing to look at and move my gaze back from to inhabit the body inside, to find that place that helps us to balance. So another pratyaharic immersion that asana brings to our life and another really intelligent way to turn inwards. So let's do the other side. So holding the hip, squeezing, and becoming conscious of the outside edge of the fine hip of the standing leg, which is going to be the right leg now. We're going to lift the left leg and place the foot as high as possible and find immediately that conversation between the inner thigh and the sole of the foot and the sole of the foot back against the inner thigh. Try to move the inner knee of the left leg back, staying conscious of not allowing the left buttock to poke out. Relax the jaw, keep the shoulders rolled back. Ooh, I'm having a wobbly moment here. Bring the arms in front, interlock the fingers, turn the palms out, and inhale and lift the arms up. Press down to lift up. Open the armpits. And three, and two. See how the lift helps the balance. And one, coming down. And refinding Tadasana. Roll the shoulders back. Deep inhalation. And deep exhalation. So we're going to move to Trikonasana. But just a little word on full Vrikshasana in general. Incorporating that. And then we can use this pose sometimes to check in on our emotional state about things. And also maybe get some guidance from what we see. For instance, if your Vikshasana is coming easily and you know you have stability and you want to check on something in your life that's a little bit of a, a worry, when you're in the Vikshasana, let the thought of that come in and see what happens. Often if it's something that might not be good for us, sort of like a muscle testing exercise, then the pose crumbles. So it's a wise pose, and balancing poses are wise in that way. They just take things to a new level. And we'll see that in Ardha Chandrasana today. So let's come to Tarasana, facing the long edge of the mat for Utita Kripanasana. Preparing to jump. Vibrancy, sharpness. We were taking the feet further apart last week, so let's continue with that. Turning to the right. Ripping the legs and rolling them away, so we're connecting the back buttocks, meeting and coming forward, the organs lifting upwards. Inhale and exhaling, reaching to the right, keep the legs gripping, the buttocks coming forward, the organs lifting upwards as we come down and find Uthita Triparasana. Connecting with the breath. And through the breath, finding the outside edge of that back foot is always the first point of reference in standing poses. Lifting the inner arch, the inner ankle. Squeezing the back inner knee. Keep gripping that front thigh up, rolling it. Move the tailbone forward. And lift the inner organs upwards, which means draw the belly button towards the lower spine, towards the lumbar, and then up to the sternum. 
That's it. Three. Stretch the arms apart. And two. And one. Inhaling up. And turning to the other side. Grip the legs. Roll the thighs apart so that they meet behind and they press the buttocks forward and already lift the organs. Feel them lifting, having life. Inhale and exhale to the left. Keep the legs gripped, reaching and coming down, finding Utita Trikonasana. Connecting with the breath. And through that experience, reconnecting with the outside edge of that back foot, checking that the inner arch is lifted, the inner ankle is lifted, that the back of your knee is tightly squeezed, and that the front leg is still doing its work of gripping up and rolling open. And move the tailbone forward. And think of the organics in our abdominal cavity, lifting both in and up, in and up. Feel the length and the freedom that comes from that. And two, and one, inhaling up, turning the feet in, and jumping together, Tadasana, checking our feet, putting our hands on our back hips, our back buttocks, and moving them in two directions, down to the heels, so you can see how the heels can become firmer, and forward. Now, putting our hands right here on the base of the abdomen, underneath the belly button, and Pushing back to the lower back. So sucking the hands back towards us and lifting up. And that's the action we want to find in our standing poses. And it helps the organs to lift. So our organs tend to drop with age. Everybody's organs, unfortunately. And we want to keep our inner body as healthy as our outer body. So let's look at that in Vira Padasana too. And jumping. Nice wide stance. Going to the right, gripping, tailbone forward, organs lifting, inhale, and exhale, begin to make that square. Keep the back arm alert, the back leg alert as you come down. Feel how the back arm is pulling the trunk so that we're really still facing the long edge of the mat, not allowing this to happen. That back arm is really important because now, as you feel it pulling, I want you to turn the organs from the right to the left, being pulled by the back arm, even though you're looking over the front arm. See if you can feel the organs moving with the back arm. And three, and two, and one. Coming up and changing sides. Get that nice width. Make sure the legs are doing their action and the organs, we're bringing more sensitivity to them. Lifting in and up. Inhale and exhale. Begin to make a square. Keep lifting the organs. Keep the back arm alert and the outside edge of the foot charged. And notice how when the back arm is really alert and pulling, it's helping our trunk to move in the direction we want. So it's facing forward and it's pulling the organs. So try to move gently, but firmly with the back arm, that sensation of the organs moving from the left to the right, being pulled out the length of that back arm. Over and over again, turning, pulling. That's it, three, and two, and one. Coming back up, turning the feet in, and jumping the feet together. In Tadasana, once again, hands on hips for a little bit, with your thumbs on the back hips. Press the hip, the middle buttock forward, elbows back, hands here, inner organs in and up, and then find Tadasana. I know it feels a bit funny at first, <laughs> but it's a training thing. You have to over-exaggerate the movements to then hope later to just do it just gently, subtly from inside. Okay, so Padshvakonasana next. We'll be bringing our hands to the outside edge of the foot again. Classical pose, if you like blocks, hit pause on me, gather your blocks, and let's meet back in Tadasana. 
Soft, smooth inhale and soft, smooth exhale. Preparing to jump. And jump! Going to the right. So already establish that the organs are being pulled by that back arm. Rip the legs, inhale. Exhale, begin to make a square. Keep the back arm pulling the organs back, the back leg firm. Coming down to, whoops, I always forgot. <laughs> Stage one of Padivrita Pashta Corazan. Turn that back foot in a little bit, relift the inner arch of the back foot. Now lift the organs. Belly button to the lower back and up to the sternum will help that action. Then turn the top arm and extend the arm diagonally over for full Pashvakonasan. Reconnect to the outside edge of the foot. Squeeze the back inner knee. Move the front buttock bone forward and pull gently the belly button to the lower back and up to the sternum. Feel the length coming and three and two and one. Inhaling up and exhaling to the left. Already, just moving the middle buttocks forward and relifting the organs. Make sure the legs are gripping. Inhale, prepare. Feel the organs being pulled back by the back arm. And exhale, begin to make that square. Keeping the back arm pulling the organs back. Coming into the Parashvakonashan stays one. Turn the back foot in a little bit. Lift the inner arch, re-squeeze the back knee. Suck the belly button gently towards the lower back and then upwards towards the chest, feel the opening. Now turn the top arm and extend the arm diagonally over, full Pashvakonasan. Re-squeeze the back inner knee tightly. Check on your front knee. Don't let it turn in, move the inner knee to the outer knee. Now try to push the front buttock bone forward, turning and twisting. Now belly button to the lower spine and up towards the sternum. Re-stretch, feel that length. And three, and two, and one. Inhaling up, turning the feet in, and jumping the feet together. Tadasan. Immediately gently push the middle buttocks forward, and lift the belly button in, and up. New space, new experience, soft, smooth inhale. Soft, smooth, exhale. And it's now time for Ardha Chandrasana, stage two. So let's get our blocks and come back and meet on the mat. One block on each side, taking the height that feels right for you. So we're going to go into balancing today on this one. Starting from Tadasan, remembering that we enter our Advachandrasan through Trikonasan. Then we go to stage one, which we've been doing all week. And now we're going to go to stage two, which involves lifting the back leg. Okay, so nice calm breath, soften the face. Keep the organs lifting, the sternum opening. Preparing to jump. And jumping. Checking. Preparing for Uthita Tripanasa. Adjusting as needed. Organs lifting. Exhaling, reaching. Soft, smooth, inhale and exhale. Re establish presence. Lowering that top arm. Keeping the shoulder, the top shoulder rolling open. Preparing to step forward. Rerolling the shoulder over. The back toes are light. This is where we left off last week. Moving the block forward as needed in order to bring that back foot closer until really all the weight is on that front foot. Begin to lift the back leg. Roll the top shoulder over. Look straight ahead. Squeeze the back of the knee. Push up through the ball of the foot. 
try to move that front buttock bone forward so that it's not poking out behind. Reroll the front of the shoulder open. Soften the gaze. And three. And two. And one. Bending. As we step back, we bring the block back with us. We straighten the legs to find Trikonasan. We reach the arm up, turning the top on, and extending the arm over. Deep, soft inhalation and exhalation. And inhaling up. Turning the feet in and jumping the feet together. Take a breath, observe the particular mind state that comes from balancing. And let's do the other side. Okay, from Tavas, so we know a bit more what to expect now. And jumping. Utita Triconasa. Organs lifting, chest opening. Inhale, exhale. Lowering that top arm now and rolling the front of that shoulder back, keeping the chest well open. Preparing to enter stage one of Adha Chandrasa. Checking where your block is, bending the knee, Hand to the block and stepping. Finding the right distance. Roll the top shoulder back again. Feel the weight and density come to the front standing foot. Preparing to enter stage two. Moving the block forward as needed as we bring the back foot in. All of the weight is now on the foot. Feel the foot connect and then begin to lift the back leg, charging it, pushing out through the balls of the feet, observing, keep trying to charge the back leg, lifting it up to hip height, squeeze that back inner knee, grip the front thigh muscles up, and roll the top shoulder back, trying to look straight ahead, the face neutral. Make sure that the front buttock, the left buttock isn't poking out, Push it forward and turn and twist open. Re-squeeze the back in the knee. Wrap the muscles around the thigh bones. And three. And two. And one. Preparing to step back. Moving the block with us. Turning the back foot in a little bit. Lifting the arch. And straightening that leg. And finding Utika Trikarasana. Turning the top arm, extending the arm over. Soft, smooth inhale, soft, smooth exhale. And then inhaling up. Turning the feet back in. And jumping with the feet together. Tadasana. Lengthen these collarbones. Roll the shoulders back, soften the jaw and lift the organs. Soft, smooth inhale. Soft, smooth exhale. And it is now time for Vira Badasana 1. So let's just move our blocks to the side and we're going to use a strap to name Vira Badasana 1. It's going to go around the back leg. So here's how to set it up. It's very easy and it really teaches us a lot about what that back thigh, particularly the inner groin, is doing. And it also gives us amazing traction to explore the lifting of the organs. So I'm doing the mirror image of you. So we'll be going to the right first. So your left leg will be your back leg. And this is going to be my back leg here. And I just want to show you this one thing. So here we go, we have the strap. I'm going to put my back leg through. And you want to have the strap so that when you pull it, it's come, it comes to the back. You don't end up having to pull the strap forward because 
We want to put the buckle right on the inner thigh and then we're going to pull it from the back when we're in the pose and it's going to roll that thigh in with us. So extra sensation, extra integration. So once you've got the strap on, hip pulls if you need to, straps can be confusing at first, the buckles and all that stuff and which way they're going. So take your time to really make sure you've got that action happening and then let's start straight with legs already wide as if we'd already jumped so that we can just keep a hand on that back strap so that it's ready for us. Turn the toes in, the heels out, lift the inner arches. Okay, normally we would extend both arms and lift up to the lips and then turn to the right hand side. So we are going to not extend the arms for now, we're going to turn to the right. And now we're going to take our excess strap up behind us like this and begin to pull and as we pull, roll that back thigh in. So I want you to actually feel that you're overturning to the right, which is good. An overturn, by the time you start bending that knee, is going to turn back out a little bit. So if you start from an overturn, you're setting yourself up for a really nice posture in the actual pose. So re-pull and make the experience of that back thigh rolling in, overturning the hips. At the same time, pull the arms and see how you'll be able to feel more stretch and opening here and go into that. Now we're going to come into the pose, but before we do that, we have to do one crucial adjustment. We have to move the tailbone forward and the middle buttocks forward. And we want to think of the organs lifting up. And when you do that, pull with your hands on the strap to lift up, to stretch more, lift the organs up. Now we're beginning to descend, keeping those organs lifted, keeping the back thigh rolling in. So descending slowly so you can uh, keep attention on the movements. When does your back thigh start rolling out? Overroll it, overturn those hips for the experience. Move the tailbone forward again and come to your abdominal cavity. Think of all the organs in there and gently lift them to the lower back and up using your hands on the strap to help you explore that experience and breathing into that and three and two and one coming back up re-roll the back leg in relift the organs and exhale release come back and step the feet together Tadasana. So, I love that experience. Let's change the strap onto the next back leg and make that again there. Remember the buckle, so you can pull it back. Nice and high. If you move the buckle too far back, you won't get the same action because the strap slips a little. So start a little bit forward so that when you're in the pose and it moves it back, you're with the movement as much as possible. Threading the strap through and starting from here. <clears throat> Preparing, relaxing the face, neutralizing, organs lifting. Okay, turning to the left. And now with the hands taking the excess. Rolling that back thigh in and overturning, overturning to the left. Keep practicing, rolling the thigh in and turning, stretching up. And now let's move the tailbone and the middle buttock forward and go to all of your organs in the abdominal cavity and try to lift them in and up using the hands on the straps to help you feel that. The resistance will help you scrape them up each time you'll have more sensation. Keep rolling the back thigh in, turning the hips, lifting the organs up and we're ready to bend our front leg. Inhale and exhale, begin to make a square. Move slowly. When does the back leg start to roll out again? Keep it rolling in. Squeeze the back in the knee. Keep moving the tailbone forward. Keep lifting the organs in and up. 
the arms helping you to expose that front of the body and to get that upward life-giving lift. That's it, experimenting, breathing, exploring. And three, and two, and one. Coming back up. Organs lifting as we turn to the front. Extending. And stepping the feet together. Brilliant. So let's take that off and let's bring the awareness of that back leg into a second round of the other last time once. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's bring the awareness of that back leg into Padi Burita Trikonasan. So setting up our blocks or some of you might still be using chairs if the back leg started off really stiff. This is one of those poses that can take some time. Either way, the action of the back leg is the same for all of us. So let's bring that strap work we just did into this pose. From Tassa. And jumping. Going to the right first. With the inhale. Roll that back leg in, overturn the hips. Exhaling, reaching. Keep rolling the back thigh in, overturning the hips, finding the block. Moving the block back, or the chair back, or the hands back, making sure we have a nice width between our feet. Keep rolling the back leg in, starting to move the elbow back. Don't rush through this phase. It sets the body up, starting to move the front shoulder back. Keep checking on the state of the back leg. And then lifting the arm up, finding the full pose. Tractioning from the base of the pose. Rolling the back thigh in. And now lifting the organs. Helping to expose and open the front spine. And three, and two, and one. Hand back, roll the back thigh in again. Press the back heel down, inhaling up. And exhale, release. Tadasana. Let's do it on the other side. Preparing to jump. Going to the left. Roll the back thigh in. Overturn the hips. Inhale. Exhale. Reaching. Keep rolling the back thigh in, overturning the hips. And then coming down. Moving our blocks, our hands, our chairs back. Check on the state of the back thigh. Roll it in again. And with that action, as the hips overturn, start to move the elbow back. And the front of the top shoulder back. Check on the back thigh again, roll it in. Squeeze the back inner knee. And then stretch the top arm to the sky. Parivita Tikurasa. Keep rolling the back thigh in. And now lift the organs in and up. And three. And two. And one. Hand back, roll the back thigh in again. Move the block a little forward and densify the back heel, preparing to lift the back thigh, rolling in. And right when the hand reaches up, rolling the back thigh out until we come to here when it rolls in again. And jumping the feet together. Tanasana. Parsh, Vodanasana now, full pose. So let me just move these blocks out of the way for now. And coming back to Tanasa. Preparing to jump with vitality. Sharpness, length and broadness. Rolling the thighs in, buttocks forward, organs in and up, lifting. Bring the hands behind and Pashima Namaskar. Try to move the elbows back, the shoulders back. 
but not at the expense of the buttocks. Keep the buttocks pressing forward and not at the expense of the organs. Lift the organs. Going to the right. Nice width between the feet. Rolling the back thigh in again, overturning the hips. Squeezing the back of the knee, remembering the message of the strap. Elbows back. Sternum bright. Inhale. And exhale. Keep checking on the back leg as if the strap was on it right now. Over and over again, watching for when it tries to turn out. Turn it back in. Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. Squeeze the back of the knee tightly. Keep feeling the hips turn, overturning as you extend forward. Elbows lifting. Three. And two. And one. Roll the back thigh in, back heel dense. Giving us stability to inhale up. Turning back through the middle. Aligning the feet. Buttocks forward, organs lifting. Inhale. Exhale, turning to the left. Roll the back thigh in, feel the hips overturning. Preparing. Inhale, lift the organs, open the chest. Exhale, reaching forward. Keep the back thigh rolling in, the hips overturning. Keep squeezing the back in your knee, rolling the back thigh in, turning those hips. Relax any hardness in the face from effort. Checking in with the back thigh again. Has it rolled back out? Roll it in, turn the hips, grip the front thigh up. And lift the elbows. And then inhaling up, back heel dense and firm. Back to the front. Buttocks forward, organs lifting, and exhale, release it. Prasadita Parotanasana, realigning ourselves, turning the toes in, the heels out, the inner arches lifting, the thighs rolling in, but the buttocks coming forward so that the organs have a chance to move out of droppingness into a state a vibrant liftingness. Elbows back, inhale, look up. And exhaling forward. Keep the thighs gripped and rolling in. And keep lifting the organs. So lift the belly button to help the organs feel lifted. Lift the belly button to the lower back. Stage one, Prasadita Padotanasa. Check your feet. Are you really pressing into the outer skirting of the feet? Are the inner ankles really lifting? Are the knees, the thighs, ripping up and rolling in all the time? Are the sit bones sharp? Now, as we try to press the back ribs in, which you know, because we've been doing this for weeks now, at the same time as we're pressing the back ribs in to move the sternum forward, try to lift your belly button up all the time, bluing it to the lower back, so the organs are lifting as we do the movement. They're not dropping down. And three, and two, and one. And we're coming forward with that attention on the belly button, which gives us access to the organic body. As we come forward and down, moving the hands back. As we still keep the legs ripped up, and we roll those thighs in to sharpen and widen the sit bones apart. We're gently lifting the belly button up, even as we come down. Soft, smooth inhalations and soft, smooth exhalations. Soften the forehead, soften the cheeks, soften the tongue. Relift the belly button, re-grip the legs up and lift the trapezius muscles 
So the cervical spine is long. And then hands to the floor. Inhale up. Hips. With the thumbs, press the middle buttocks forward. Organs lifting, chest opening. And then heels and toes in. Heels and toes in. Until you can stop and find Tadasa. Good job. So we are through our standing poses. Let's come to hanging Tadasa. Inhale the arms up. Taking hold of the elbows. And exhaling forward, hanging Tadasa. Relax the head, relax the neck completely. Grip the thighs up. Widen the buttocks. And now place the hands on the mat, spread the fingers widely, and step the feet back, getting some distance, finding Adho Mukhasvanasa. Stretch the arms and stretch the legs. Roll both thighs in and feel the sit bones widen. And then bend in the knees and come down and rest on the mat. Time for Vajrasana. Feet, ankles, knees, openers with some shoulder openers. So first strap. Pulling the skin of the kneecaps up is a nice little adjustment. And finding Vajrasana. Let the lower jaw hang from the top jaw. Lift the organs, belly button to the lower spine and lifting up. Feel the broadness coming to the rib cage and the sternum. Parvatasana in Vajrasana. And lifting up. Keep pressing the front thighs down. Keep lifting the belly button in and up, in and up. And two. And one. Coming down. Changing the interlock. And lifting. Repress the front thighs down. And lift the belly button in and up, in and up. Feel the new space. And three, and two, and one. Coming down and releasing. Bring the hands behind the back, interlock the fingers together, and roll the shoulders back. Try to lift the arms higher. Keep the belly button going to the lower back. It's harder here. And lifting so that we get the arch to the middle upper back, not the lower back. And two. And one. Releasing, changing the interlock. Rolling the front shoulders back. Lifting the arms as high as we can. And then checking that our belly button is still able to lift, move back to the lower back. And lift. 
Keep rolling the front shoulders back, press the shoulder blades forward, three, and two, and one, and releasing. Yoga Mudrasana in Vajrasana. Taking hold of our ribs, moving them forward, and finding Yoga Mudrasana. Soft, smooth inhalations, and soft, smooth exhalations. Keep elongating the arms. Keep guiding the buttocks, the hips down onto the ground behind, earthing the pose. And then coming back up. Last imprint of Hajrasan. And release. So taking ourselves out of our straps <laughs> and preparing for Ulva Prasarita Adasans with whatever equipment we need, blankets, building up blankets until we gain the strength to come to the floor. As needed, you can even use two blankets. As long as the lower back stays rounded to the floor through the action of the belly button and the organs being sucked down to the lower back. So learning about how the back and the front work together. Starting from Sukta Tadasan. If you have a blanket for your Ulva Prasadiyas, just move the blanket and you can put it in right before you go into the cycle. You don't want to have a blanket in this pose. It makes it tricky to really move the buttocks towards the heels and feel the connection of the organs being sucked in and lifted, helping the lower back to stay pressed to the ground. Coming to a long vertical stretch, keeping that action in place, that crucial action. The heels firm. The belly button moving down. The lower back grounding as much as possible. Stretching the arms, stretching the waist. And three, and two, and one. Relax. Okay, doing it again, changing the side of the cross of the thumb. So re-rolling the legs in, the heels firm. Connecting each buttock to each heel. And putting our hands on our belly buttons and drawing them towards the lower back, then observe the action, how it helps to get it closer to the floor. That's it. Then at the same time, lengthening the front spine from the belly button to the sternum. Arms up, change the cross of the thumbs, re-stretch back, keeping all of that in place. So observing it, adjusting as needed. Notice the parts that tend to come off and out, getting to know ourselves. Stretch the arms and three, and two, stretch the armpits, and one, exhale, and release. Okay, now if you needed a blanket for your 1960s 30s, this is the time to put it in. So you would lift your hips up and slide it underneath the lower hips and come back down, so that when you press downwards, you really feel that connection instead of a slight gap and strain. Arms up, cross the thumbs, stretch the arms back, using support if needed for the hands. Feet off the ground and pushing the legs to 90 degrees. Press the lower back to the ground. Check on your feet. Are you really pushing through the balls of the feet? Are you spreading the toes? Are you gripping the knees? And now we're going to prepare to come down to 60 by bending the knees and exhale. Here the action gets harder, so we have to focus a little more. And it really helps to suck the outer thighs in towards each other as you ground the lower back down by sucking the abdominal fibers down towards it. 
and then bending the knees and going to 30. So here, exhale, push. Reconnect with the outer thighs. Reconnect with the outer hips. Bolting the outer hips together in order to really connect with that. Grounding the lumbar down. Three and two and one. Bending the knees. Preparing for 60. Exhale. Pressing that area down firmly, relentlessly. And three and two. Spread the toes. And one, bend the knees. And pushing up to 90. Press the lower back down. Push through the balls of the feet. And then releasing and relax completely. Letting the inner knees rest against each other and making sure that as you relax, you're still Getting this downward motion of the abdominal muscles to help the lower back really press into the floor. Okay, second side. So preparing. Bringing the arms up, changing the cross of the thumbs, finding our starting position and connecting the lower back to the floor. Feet off the ground. And with an exhale, pushing to 90. Spread the toes. Spread the balls of the feet. Sharpen the ankles. Press the lower back to the floor. And stretch the arms. Preparing for 60, bending the knees, and exhale, push. Press the lower back to the ground, over and over again, and find your outer thighs, and suck them in towards each other, and push out through the balls of the feet, and three, and two, and one. Bend the knees. Keep those inner knees touching. And with an exhale, push to 30. Bolt the outer hips together. And three, and two, and one. Bend the knees. And with an exhale, push to 60. Almost there. Keep pressing the lower back down. And three, and two, and one. Bend the knees and push to 90, which starts to feel like a blessed place. Resharpen the ankles, re-spread the toes, press the lower back down firmly. And then bending the knees. And releasing, relaxing. And then bringing the feet off the floor and finding Dvipala Suttapala Uttasana. And with each exhale, profoundly relax the abdominal area, relax the belly button. Let that entire area melt towards the lower back. No tightness, no constriction. It's just cooling down and melting and resting on the lower back. And releasing. Okay, we're rolling over, and it's now time for Dandasan and Urvahaskasan. So we're going to do our Urdha Haskasan in Dandasan, I against a wall today. You don't need to move your mat in, but just have a wall handy so that you can come into it and then come out of it. So let's prepare a blanket. Nice little long one. And we start off with the imprint of Dandasan. 
So widening our sit bones apart. And the Dandasana action is specifically the action of rolling the front shoulders back, pressing the shoulder blades forward and opening the sternum. So making that imprint in the chest, learning to open the chest in that way. And today we're going to add in the lifting of the organs. So roll the shoulders back, elbows back, press the shoulder blades forward. Now gently lift the belly button up towards the lower spine and upwards and feel that new space. Three and two and one and releasing. Okay, beautiful isn't it when we add the movement in right from the base. It's a waterfall going up, a waterfall of youth for our internal organs. So now we're going to come to the wall for our Unubahastasan in Dandasan. Yes, that should be just right. And we're widening our sit bones apart. So we're using the wall behind us to help show our spine its tendency in this pose. Oops, let's rewiden those sit bones. Press the front thighs down, the heels are firm. So already my tendency is to over to weaken this lumbar area. It's a lot of people's tendencies. And so already just sitting here, I'm conscious that I want to lift my belly button up and back. And I can feel this area connect more healthily to the wall. So next stage, keeping that becomes harder when we lift the arms. So cross the thumbs and inhale and lift up. Trying to get the hands right back. And so my immediate unthinking tendency would be, because of the body type that I have, that this vehicle has, would be to do this. And here, I need to bring the belly button back in and lengthen the right waist and the left waist and scoop the belly button up to broaden the chest without overarching the lower back. So a different movement. So feeling what your tendency is by using the wall behind you to give you reference, igniting that intelligence of the back body and how it influences the front body. And three, and two, and one. Coming down, and releasing. Widen the buttocks apart again. And let's try a second time. Pressing the thighs down. Connecting to our particular spine, using the wall there. Adjusting making experiments, and then lifting the arms up. And trying to keep that alignment. Stretching the arms higher, stretching the armpits, lifting the belly button in and up, the organs lifting, and three, and two, and one, exhale and releasing and coming down. Okay, so let's now come to Paripurna Navasan, continuing with the exploration of how to cement, if you will, bad word choice really, because cement is something horrible and toxic, but you know, to fuse, let's say, the front and the back body together for this core stability and health in our Paripurna Navasans. So starting from Dandasan, making the chest imprint. And as we move the hands back, we lean back, we bring the feet in, and we bring the heels off the floor, stage one. Good, now, we have, now we're gonna do stage two, with the legs lifted. And then arms straight. Stability, stretch the arms, palms parallel, spread the toes, try to open the chest to keep the abdominal muscles going to the lower back. And three, and two, and one. Arms back down, and legs bent, extending, refining 
than that's an action. Press the front thighs down, lift the organs in and up, shoulders rolling back. And our second Paripurna Ravasana. So as we move the hands further back, we lean back, the feet come in. Feet lift up, stage one. Now let's make the stage two on this one like we did when we first learned it. There's two different ways to come into it with the arms straight. And then straighten the legs from here. I'd love to know which entry you prefer. If you could leave a note after class below and let me know. That's it. Wrapping the arm muscles around the arm bones, wrapping the leg bones around the leg bones, spreading the toes, and sucking the abdominal fibers towards the lower back, chest opening. And three, and two, and one. Arms back, extending. Dandasana. Roll the shoulders back, lift the organs in and up. Open the sternum. And exhale, release. And it's now time to explore a new core strengthener. We come to it from the floor. It's the preparation for Ardhanavasana. And actually, I, I find the preparation harder than the actual pose. Again, something you'll let me know next class, because next class we'll be doing the full pose as well. So we start lying down. And making sure to move our buttocks towards the heels so the lower back feels connected to the floor. Legs firm. Then we bring the arms and we interlock the fingers together like this. And we bring the hands to the back of the skull. And then we notice how our elbows are never to be lifted up because we're using our hands to lift ourselves. And we correct that. We move the elbows back and we connect our abdominal muscles to the lower back, engaging that fusion that we've been looking at a lot today in all kinds of ways. So elbows back, fusing. And then we try to lift ourselves up without letting the elbows come forward as much as we can. From the core, legs firm, and then we lift the legs and we hold here. And five, and four, and three, and two, and one. Coming down, and we take a moment to relax. Now, if you're feeling strain in your neck, it's because you took the effort of the pose from there. So more attention into here and more allowing the skull to rest in the hands and working slowly, practice by practice, so that most of our effort is coming from here as much as possible, radiating out and holding the rest of the pose. So we're gonna do the other interlock now. So we roll our legs in and we reconnect the buttocks to the heels, the lower back coming to the floor. The abdominal fibers fusing towards the lumbar. Visualize that inside, strong, compact. Lift the hands up, change the interlock of the fingers, and come and hold the back of the skull. And immediately you see the elbows know what's required, and they're going to start moving back here. Relax the face. Okay, we're lifting up. Elbows back, lifting up. Elbows back. Avoid pushing the head forward. Come more and more into the core, into that center part to hold the movement. And then lift the legs, bolt the outer hips together. Keep the core fused and connected with the lower back. Elbows open and three and two and one. Coming down and releasing. And rolling the head up and relaxing. Good, and then it's just a quick to re-relax the abdomen before we move into our salamangasana. Soft, smooth, inhale. Soft, smooth, exhale. Re-relax the shoulders, relax the abdomen, relax the face. And then feet to the ground and rolling over. And it's now time for Sarvangasana. So Sarvangasana is this the time associated with the end of our practice. It's the pose that 
processes and integrates, if you will, all the work that we've done. The also lots of unconscious energetic work going on that we may not even be aware of yet. And having our Sarvangasan boosting the immune system, that last opening to the upper back, shoulders, the chest, and allowing all of that shiftingness to settle deep as needed. So preparing our blankets, sometimes I use four, sometimes I use five, depending on how the neck is feeling. Sometimes I use three, and sometimes I use different ways of folding the blankets, which we'll cover in some future classes. So setting our strap up, taking any other things that we might need for our vehicle, a bolster behind for the feet, a bolster in front to help with the hips. Having the strap handy. And here we go. Three fingers away from the edge. Lifting up. Rolling the shoulders back. And the strap on the arm. Right above the elbows, interlocking the fingers, roll each shoulder back. Recalibrate the neck, soften the throat. If you feel ready, go ahead and release the interlock of the hands, bend the elbows and place the hands on the back, preparing to come to stage one of Sarvangasana. Bending the legs, keeping the kneecaps towards you, take a breath in stage one. Coming to stage two. And last week we really talked about not skipping this stage. It's almost harder than the real pose, so to speak. Keep trying to move the front thighs back, the buttocks forward, the kneecaps to the sky. Feel how you have to move the middle buttocks forward. Take a breath in stage two. And now from here, just Straightening the legs and finding Sarvangasana. Find the rhythmic smooth inhales and exhales. Check your feet, check your legs. Suck the outer thighs towards each other and extend up through the legs. Both the outer hips towards each other and extend up through the legs. Keep softening the throat, softening the face and having a soft, smooth inhale and a soft, smooth exhale. Now spread the feet hip distance apart and move the middle buttock forward and the front thighs back. Press the hands into the back ribs to press the back ribs in. Get them higher up the back. And now with the middle buttocks pressing forward and the front thighs pressing back, bring the legs back together and recharge the legs up. Feel the difference. And now we bend our knees and connect with stage two. And through stage one. And into Halasan. Interlocking the fingers behind the back. Stretching the arms straight. And lifting each shoulder up to roll it back. Try to press the arms down and to press the back ribs in and up. To roll the thighs in, remembering the strap on our back leg so the sit bones widen. And to push the front thighs up to the thigh bone.
And now changing the interlock of the fingers and re-rolling each shoulder back. Densifying the arms, pressing down, pressing the front thighs up. Rolling the thighs in to widen the sit bones. Even and smooth breath, the throat soft. And then bending the knees, taking the strap off. And slowly, gently unrolling. Immediately moving back. Rolling the shoulders back, inner knees resting. The abdomen cooling and melting to rest on the lower back. The face quiet. Soft, smooth inhalations and soft, smooth exhalations. And then slowly moving back even more so the lower back is connected back onto the ground. before rolling over, pushing ourselves up. And we're almost done. We're ending with supine twists now in our sequence. Jatara Paniratanasanas. So let's just move the blankets out of the side. And come and lie back down. You'll remember from last class we had preparation one, which is where this happens and we don't bring the knees as high. So here we go, inhaling. And exhaling as we turn and twist to the left. Trying our best to keep the knees stacked one on top of the other. Having a soft, smooth, pacifying breath. Keep the arms stretched apart. And then bringing the legs back up, making sure that we're in the middle. Preparation one, Chakrapadratasana on the left hand side. Inhale, and with the exhale, knees coming down. And see this top knee loves to go back. It's just making that little effort to try to connect the inner knees, to have presence there. And then exhale and turning and twisting to the right. Keep stretching the arms apart. And coming back up. Make sure you're in the middle. Preparation number two. Restretch. Bring the calves to the backs of the thighs. Inhale. And exhale the knees much higher up to the right elbow. Try to stack the top knee on top of the bottom knee. Inhale and exhale. See what happens when we try to twist to the left here now. Where do we feel it? Just exploring that. Bringing breath there.
and then bring the legs back up. You can see how beautifully ready it makes us, doesn't it, for resting. So calves to the backs of the thighs, re-stretch the arms, Jatara Parimatanasana, preparation number two. And exhale the knees to the left elbow, nice and high. And turning and twisting to the right. Finding a soft, smooth and even breath cycle that will accompany this exploration. Once again, just checking you're in the middle and ending with a smooth, even translation from breath to left body to right body in Dvipada Sutta Pavanottasana. So that anything that had gone a little askew unconsciously is coming back together before our final restingness. And of course that relationship between mind and body, body and mind, as we even one out, we even the other out. So allowing that to happen, giving it some time here. And we are now ready for that final delicious pose of ours, the belly Karani. So rolling over, taking the blankets that you need. I'm going to use three today, building up a little height, a little more height underneath my lower back. Now, if you tend to have a fragile lower back, just stick with one for now. If you try to and you feel it's, it's creating a kind of inability for the abdomen to go down because of tension in the lower back, reduce to one. And Enjoy your Vipati Sakarani. Make it effort free. So, whatever is needed to make that state of mind be leading you into that state of surrender. Okay, let's come up to our walls. And I like this top blanket, blanket as you well know, over the eyes and ears. So once I've checked that my legs are rolling open and that I'm comfortable, the shoulders are back, I'm going to bring that into place. And then extend the arms out diagonally away from me, re-roll the shoulders one last time and press the shoulder blades gently up. And then with an exhale, entering into our Vipalita.
gently, just moving the fingertips until you feel able to bring the palms together, pressing the palms together in front of the stone chest. And ending with our loving kindness meditation. Loka samastaha sukino varantu. Om shanti, shanti, shanti. And then gently releasing the hands, resting them on the lower abdomen. And then bending the knees, the feet sliding down the wall and pushing ourselves backwards so that our lower backs can come to the floor. Reconnecting with our hands, with the last thought for the organs, the organic body that we've explored in a little more depth today. And then rolling over, pushing ourselves back out, re-emerging. Another practice complete, more understandings, more explorations. Namaste. Practice well. And I look forward to seeing you next week. I've got some fun wall stuff planned for us to help us in Adha Tangasana and a variety of other poses. Take care.